Hey guys, Naomi said now for today's video, I'm going to talk about Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. The ball is in Arsenal's court. This is a quote from Aubameyang talking about his potential stay for Arsenal. Also, Fraser Forrester from Southampton, currently on loan at, Le at Celtic, being linked with Arsenal as well. I'll be giving my thoughts around that. But until then, please leave your comments below. It really does help the channel out. Continue to like the videos. That also helps the channel out, out as well. And subscribe. Now, let's get started. So, let's talk about Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Literally 20 minutes ago, the Metro released an article on their website talking about Aubameyang, the Arsenal striker whose contract is due to run out at the end of next season. And it is said that Arsenal, or at least quoted by Aubameyang, are holding the keys. It says, and I quote, it's them, brackets the club, who have the keys and for them to do the work. Afterwards, we will see what happens. It's a turning point in my career. I have been very frank with everyone. It will be, of course, a very difficult decision to make. It is possible the most important decision of my career, but so far, nothing has been decided. That is the quote from Aubameyang, and this is from French outlet Telefoot. And that's where things are with Aubameyang right now. It's up to the club. He's obviously told the club what he wants. Later on in the article, he starts talking about trophies. He wants trophies. And that means that there must has to be assurances either around trophies, but more likely or not, has to be assurances around salary and role within the Arsenal club. Now, obviously, he doesn't give away in terms of what he's told Arsenal what he wants, but Arsenal knows what he wants. And this is why you might be seeing all of these other rumours around. Clearly, Arsenal have been trying to work something out. That tells me, um, at least in my opinion, that there must be, at least financially, Arsenal must be able to reach some type of agreement on what that would look like financially for him and what numbers could look like. I think Arsenal might have presented something to him. But there are so many other facets to this that we just don't know. What would Aubameyang's role be? Who knows? Maybe he might have told them, I never want to play out on the left wing again. We just don't know. That could be one of the stipulations. I mean, we've heard this with other players before who get transferred to different clubs. So there are several things that need to be factored in in terms of making a decision on this for Arsenal. The one thing that I will say is that with, with this, with Arsenal knowing this information, it does not surprise me why we've been linked with so many different strikers because Arsenal are assessing their options and possibly they're assessing the option of losing a Bamiyang. And also, there is also the Lacazette side that I know is also connected with this as well. Arsenal have gone on record of saying that they do not want to lose both strikers. However, I've said on this channel before that I do think it's a reasonable assumption that Arsenal could lose both strikers. I don't think it's, that would benefit Arsenal. I think at the very least, you need to keep one. Uh, and for me, I, th I think it's very difficult what Arsenal are trying to play right now. I think this is a battle of who do you want? Are you going to try to call a Bamiang's bluff? Are you going to try to maybe um, n don't offer him a new contract? See what happens over the next, let's say, six to nine months when he's in the last year. And maybe uh, the club are maybe hoping that no offers coming for him. But, I mean, Aubameyang is a top draw striker. Like, some club will want him. Some club, at the very least financially, will want to offer him the money that he wants. Because I'm sure money has to be a part of it. I mean, if I was in his position, money would be the part of it as well. Along with trophies, along with the role at the club, along with stuff like captaincy and all of those other things that, that might be um, involved in the decision making. But if I'm a Bamiya, I'm going to be looking for the best decision for him, as he said within the quote there. But, and, but on Arsenal's standpoint, I think they don't want to leave themselves in a position where... Uh, they're only left with one kind of senior striker. 
I think that there is the fans' backlash that they also might be worried about. Again, like I said, you know, they don't want to lose both of them because even a couple of days ago, Lacazette was talking about he wants to understand his role at the club. And again, this ties in with that because Lacazette wanted to understand his role at the club. But on the other hand, I think Aubameyang is first option for Arsenal. I think... If Aubameyang signs a new contract, I think they'd be willing to sell Lacazette, to be really honest. But if Arsenal don't present a good enough offer for Aubameyang, he'll be off. And then if you're right there negotiating with Lacazette and the offer that we made Aubameyang, if we're, we can't then turn around and be like, oh, well, this offer was for Aubameyang. It's not for you because we don't believe that you're good enough. And then Lacazette's going to be like, you know what? Fuck you. You don't believe I'm good enough. I'm off. Like, just get rid of me. Like, you don't be- have that kind of belief in me that I'm your top striker, that I can be as good as Aubameyang, then I'm off. But they don't want that. So there's, there, there are so many different facets that's so tied into this. And this isn't going to get to a resolution until anytime soon. And I think part of that um, that's going to weigh heavily on that is Champions League football. Um, in regards to what an offer like that would look like. So let's see what happens over the next coming weeks and um, months uh, around this. Also, Frazier Forster. Now, this name might sound familiar. He's a Southampton goalkeeper that is currently on loan at Celtic. He's been linked with Arsenal. Uh, it's said that Frazier Forster, the six foot six goalkeeper, is seen as a target for Arsenal. Um, this came out earlier on this morning. And I wanted to really talk about this because I've been watching uh, the two preseason games. Um, and in the second one against Brentford, we lost. And that's ideally because we had Martinez in goal. And I've seen him in the Europa League this season. And he has been absolutely shocking. Um, and I, even though at the beginning of the season, I said that we should give him a chance. We have given him a chance. And the thing that I will say is that Martinez, he is good and he does have his moments and flashes where he can be a Premier League goalkeeper. However, I do not believe that Emiliano Martinez is a good enough goalkeeper um, to be a real backup for Arsenal. Not right now. And Fraser Forster, um, we're talking experienced player. I believe he's an England international. He might have gotten called up once or twice for the England squad and has bucket loads of experience in, in all competitions. I mean, he's had experience in the Europa League with Celtic. Uh, and this season, he's done really well at Celtic and Celtic are trying to keep him. Now, I know, again, he's not one of these most glamorous signings that everybody, you know, really clamors for, especially as Arsenal fans. But when you're talking about slowly improving the squad, these are the type of signings that you have to make, you know, and I've said the same thing with the likes of Ryan Frazier, you know, again, this progression to get back to where we want to be has to be step by step by step. And Frazier Forrester is once, as at least one step better than Emiliano Martinez. Uh, and I think this could be a very good uh, signing. It's said that Fraser Forrester is valued at about 15 million, but... I mean, for a player who looks like he's out on his way out of Southampton with everything that's really going on uh, now, I do think that there is an opportunity for Arsenal to potentially get him for a lot less than than that. So maybe closer to 10 mil, but, you know, he's English. So, again, valuations tend to fluctuate a lot when it comes to English players. So hopefully we can get something like a Fraser Forrester on a good deal. But guys, let me know your thoughts uh, on Fraser Forrester. Do you think that we should be signing him and replacing him for Emiliano Martinez? Also, what do you think on the story on Aubameyang and this new news on Aubameyang definitely puts things in perspective a lot more, but also still brings a lot of confusion. Leave your thoughts below and comments below. Remember, continue to like the video and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Peace.